Once you've finished quilting your quilt top, the last step is to add binding around the edge to cover up the raw edges of the fabric in the batting. Today, I'm going to show you a simple method to put binding on your quilt by machine. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. Once you finish piecing your quilt and then quilting it, the last step for finishing is to put binding. And that's a small strip of fabric that goes over the edge just to enclose all the edges and just finish it off. Now there are a few different methods for binding. One really common method is to stitch one side of your binding on by machine and then stitch your other side on by hand. But there's another method where you can stitch both sides on by machine. So I'm going to show you the easy method for doing the whole thing by machine, but I will also explain how you would adapt this to stitch it on by hand. So the first thing you need to do is determine how long your binding is going to be. And so for that, you need to measure the perimeter or the outside of your quilt. And so your length, width, length, and width. So I've measured the size of this quilt that I'm finishing and it's 168 inches. So once you have that, add about 30 inches and that will allow for the extra for when the layers of the binding over cross and for turning the corners. So when I add 168 and 30, I look at 198. So 198 inches is the length that I need. And so if my fabric is 40 inches wide, then five 40 inch strips will give me 198 inches. So you take the total of the perimeter, add 30, and then divide by 40, and that will give you an idea of how many strips you will need. Sometimes if it's really close, like if you calculated you would need 4.1 strips, then you might want to cut four and then see if you need to cut more. But if you have like 4.8 or 4.9, then you'll want to cut five for sure. Once you've done that calculation, then you're going to cut the strips with the fabric. Now there's a little difference of opinion of how wide you should cut your strips. So some people like to cut them at two inches. Some people like two and a half inches. I personally like two and a quarter inches. That size seems to be good for me, but you can try a couple different sizes and see what works for you. Also, I cut my pieces of binding straight with the grain of the fabric. There's another method where you cut your strips on the diagonal so that the strips are biased. And if you are doing something that has curves on the edge, then you must have bias strips. Also, there is an argument that binding that is cut on the bias will last longer and it will hold up to wear and tear better. And there is a lot of logic in that argument. I usually choose to cut my binding strips with the straight of the grain because it is quicker and easier to do and it's not difficult to work with. So I do know that there's a potential that 40 years down the road, I could have quilts that have the binding starting to wear out and I would have to replace it at that time. But that's a choice that I'm choosing to make right now. So whether you cut your strips on the straight or on the bias, uh, that's up to you and you'll have to think about the different options and what is the best choice for you. Once our fabric strips have been cut, we're gonna join them together to make a really long strip. So to make it easy to join, trim them at a 45 degree angle, and then we'll have our strips that we can join. And joining at a 45 degree angle will just help eliminate some of the strain and some of the bulk when we're joining on it. If we had a straight seam, then you would have the seam at the front and the back, and that would be just a big bump to stitch over. So we'll join on the diagonal, and then you can see when we're stitching this on how that makes it easier. So when you're joining a diagonal seam, you do not want to line your pieces up exactly to join them. So you don't wanna have it lined like this, because then when you stitch a quarter inch seam, they won't align with each other. So you do have to offset the edges a little bit. 
So we want to have the corners peeking out over the sides like this because then we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away and you can see that the quarter of an inch will hit at the indents on the side and that will help our seams lay flat when we open them. So there you can see that's what it looks like when it's stitched and then when we open it then it's nice and straight and then we will press those seams open. So once we've joined those pieces together now we're going to take it to the ironing board and we're going to press these pieces in half lengthwise and you want the right side of the fabric pointing out. So once it's pressed you're going to have this long skinny strip and on one of the ends press the edge over about a quarter of an inch just to hold the right edges down and then it's going to be time to stitch this onto the quilt. Now if you want to finish sewing this on by hand then you will stow this on to the right side of the quilt and then it's going to flip over and you will stitch hand stitch onto the back of the quilt. But when we're sewing it by machine, we want to sew this onto the back of the quilt. And so starting with the end that you've pressed, we're going to find a place not near a corner, somewhere in the middle and align up the raw edge of the binding strip with the raw edge of the quilt and then we're going to start about six inches away from the edge of the binding and then we're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. I like to just align this as I go. I will come up and align it as I'm stitching but if you have little clips that can help to hold it in place as well. If you have an extension table on your sewing machine, this is a good time to use it, especially if you have a really large quilt, because it will help support the weight of the quilt as you're stitching. So I have the edge of the binding strip aligned with the edge of the quilt, and I'm gonna start stitching down from the edge, and I'm gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then as I go, I will just align the next piece of binding and then stitch that. So when you're coming up to the corner, you're going to stop with the needle down a quarter inch away from the edge of the quilt, from this edge. And then we're going to turn the quilt and stitch on a 45 degree angle right out to that corner. Once you get out there, then you're going to actually break the thread and remove it from the machine. So here we have this 45 degree angle line that we've stitched off. So we're going to fold the binding on a 45 degree angle. So it's going to go echo from that stitching line and fold it over this way. And then we'll fold it back straight and then we're going to start stitching here so not right on the edge but in and so we're going to end up with this little flappy part in the middle and that's is what and that's what's going to help us fold around to the corner on the other side so we'll turn the quilt put it back in and start stitching a quarter of an inch down from that edge. And then continue stitching around the quilt in the same way, repeating that at every corner. So once you've gone all the way around the quilt, you're going to uh, come up to the part where you've started. So stitch till you get close to there. 
So once you get all the way around, you're gonna have to trim this piece, the piece that you're adding, so that it will lay inside that flap. So don't cut it too short. You do wanna have it overlap a bit. And cut this piece also at a 45 degree angle, so it's not a lot of bulk in there. And then we're gonna lay that piece inside. And because this piece was pressed over, there's not gonna be any raw edges. So that laid inside. And then continue stitching until you get to the stitches where you started and then overlap it by a couple of inches. And then you're done. You can remove this from the machine. So now that we've stitched that onto the back of the quilt, we're gonna turn the whole quilt over and we can see the stitching line here of where we added the binding. And now we're gonna fold the binding over and then top stitch right along the edge there to hold it down. Now, if you were sewing this by hand, you could sew this on by hand, but by machine, we're just gonna top stitch this. stitching this with a straight stitch so you can see that's what it is going to look like. You can also use decorative stitches for a fun effect. When you're getting close to the corner of the quilt, the corner should fold nicely if you have this straight and then fold that back and it should look like a little mitered corner. So you'll just stitch to there. I like to add a couple of back stitches to hold it securely. And then stopping with the needle down, lift the foot and turn the whole quilt. And then you can stitch it on the other side. Once you've stitched all the way around your quilt, you'll come back to where you started stitching, overlap by a couple of inches, and then you're done. So now that my binding is on, my quilt is complete. To see a detailed written tutorial with pictures, you can click on the link below. And for more quilting tips, tricks, and patterns, be sure to check out my website, evadastudio.com.